Hi, everybody, and welcome to Everyday Manna. Today, we are going to make an easy sheet pan meal. We're going to make sheet pan fajitas using chicken. So we're making chicken fajitas. To go alongside that, we're going to have a pinto bean bake, and we're going to have a stuffed angel food cake. It's going to be delicious. I'm going to get started on the pinto bean bake because actually this takes longer to cook than the fajitas. Now, there's two ways you can do this recipe. You can take like a pound of dried pinto beans. You can use any kind of bean you like, um, black beans, cranberry beans. I'm just using pintos. And you can soak them and then overnight or you know for a couple of hours and then cook them and drain them. Or you can use four cans of canned pinto beans, which is what I did. I didn't rinse them, but I did drain the liquid off. So I just have four cans of pinto beans that I'm just going to put into my baking dish. That's just a little easier. But if you, if you want to use, um, you know, dry pinto beans, delicious. Just make sure that you cook them first. To that, I'm going to add a little bit of thyme. I don't have any fresh, so I'm using dried oregano. Oregano is actually used a whole lot in Mexican cooking. I don't know if you know that or not, but it is used a lot in Mexican cooking. We think of oregano as being a pizza seasoning, an Italian seasoning, but it is used a whole lot in Mexican cooking. Um, I'm going to add some chicken broth. By the way, if you're a new cook and you have a can like this, you can open it with a can opener or use what they call a church key and do a whole bit. Make sure that you put one opposite it so that the air will flow through and it'll come out. If you don't, it, it's very difficult it's forever to get it out. I don't know that I'm going to need this whole can. I'm going to start with that and then I'll see. I'm going to add, I have little plum tomatoes, so I'm going to add plum tomatoes. If you have just a regular, like a beefsteak tomato or something, you want like one medium tomato is what you want. I'm going to dice my, and I'm not using a serrated knife, and believe me, tomatoes are a lot easier with a serrated knife. I'm going to dice these. If you don't have a fresh tomato, that's okay. You can use a can of diced tomatoes. Fire roasted diced would be delicious in this. This would be a little easier if I had the right knife, which would be a serrated knife. But I don't, so we'll use this. Just pop it right in there. I like these little Roma tomatoes, and I find when it's not tomato season, the little Roma tomatoes still have a lot of good flavor in them. Whereas the other ones, I think if they're not garden season, they don't taste as good, I don't think. But you can use just a small can of diced tomatoes. I might would drain some of the liquid off of that. Then we're going to add one onion. I'm going to use my little chopper because I don't feel like crying today. <laughs> And I, I just, I, my, I used to wear contacts and I, I could chop onions all day long and it didn't bother me. But when you wear glasses, it's not the same. And I can't wear contacts anymore. So there's that. But I'm going to use this little chopper. I love this thing. You can get them everywhere now. Uh, it's just a little food chopper. I got mine off of Amazon. I have a couple of them. I love them. They do a great job. It's not electric. You use your arm. Just put your, whatever you're chopping, down in there. Put the lid on. And this particular one, you just pull the string and the blades. There's two blades in there. And it's fine as you want it. And I want this pretty fine. Be careful of that blade. It is sharp. So be careful with your fingers. And I'm also going to add one jalapeno pepper. 
Jalapenos can be hot and they can be mild. Now, I have this out, so I'm going to use it. If you want to remove the seeds, that'll take some of the heat. I'm actually going to leave them in. I'm just going to cut it just like that and do just like I did the onion. If you don't have one of these little things, mince it fine. If you don't want as much heat, take the seeds and the membrane out. That's where a lot of the heat is. And there you go. You've got a delicious minced jalapeno and you don't get all those oils on your hand as, as much. They don't bother me. If you are sensitive to the oils in peppers, please make sure that you wash your hands or wear gloves because the oils in that, if it gets in your eye, will burn. So, uh, you know, wear just like some little rubber gloves. If you are sensitive to the uh, heat or the oils in the pinto or in the jalapeno. Now, to this, I need to add a little bit of salt and pepper. Not too, too much because the beans, of course, do have some salt. I love pepper, so I am adding a lot of pepper. You know how I am. And we're just going to stir this together. And we're going to put this in a 350 degree oven up to about an hour. But after about 30 minutes, I'll show you what we're going to do next to make this delicious. And I think that's enough liquid in this. I used, well, I might as well use the rest. I don't have too much left, maybe an ounce. So that's one 14 and a half ounce can. You don't cover it or anything. Just make sure it's good and mixed. You can do this in a slow cooker too, if you wanted to. Just make sure, I like to just make sure all of those jalapenos are good and spread around. I think that's fine. And we're going to pop this in the oven at 350 degrees for about an hour. But we'll check it in about 30 minutes and I'll show you how to finish it off. I'm going to clean up my mess. And when I come back, we're going to get started on our sheet pan fajitas. Couldn't be simpler and they're absolutely delicious. I'll be back in just a minute. All right, now our pinto bean bake is in the oven and we're gonna put a little topping on that just a little bit, but it's just cooking in the oven and we're going to make some sheet pan fajitas. Now I'm making chicken, but you could do this with any protein you like. You could slice up a, a, like a sirloin steak or a skirt steak or a flank steak. Flank is probably my favorite for fajitas but you could use you know, any of those, just make sure you cut it across the grain. You could use shrimp. If you wanna use shrimp, I would not add the shrimp until like the last five minutes or so. Shrimp cook very, very quickly. If you've ever cooked shrimp and they're rubbery, they're overcooked. They literally only take five minutes, really. So if you're gonna use shrimp, which you can, Peel them, devein them, and you can either leave them whole or chop them depending on how big they are. Um, and just don't add those yet. But I'm using chicken. Now I have here about two pounds of chicken tenders that I have already cut up into pieces. And I, I wanted bigger pieces. I didn't want tiny little pieces. I don't want to touch the chicken yet. So I did them, you know, about like that. I use tenders because that's what I had. If you have chicken breast, use the breast. Just cut it up into similar size pieces. You want them to be kind of, you know, chunky because we are going to be eating it in a tortilla. 
So I'm going to do um, some peppers now. I love red pepper, so I'm using a red pepper and a green pepper. But you can use whatever kind of pepper you have that you like. That's just an easy way, by the way, to uh, take out the core of the pepper. And I want them in slices. So I'm going to just kind of slice my pepper really, really well. Just put it right on my sheet pan. Going to do it in little, you know, I don't know, quarter inch pieces. If you wanted to cut them in half, you could. I love red bell peppers. Oh, they're so sweet and juicy. You could use a yellow, you could use an orange, or you can use all green. I like to use both, so I'm going to use a green one. If you, if to make this easier, cut down each side of the center core, because as you can see, the center core is what holds all of those seeds. So if you cut that, then you really get all of that out. But I don't want to waste that bottom. So what I do is just cut out the, cut off the bottom, and, and you've got, you know, the seeds and all that are pretty well intact. So I'm going to add, I like to cut out the little membranes if they're excessively big. Not if they're, you know, small, I don't fool with it. But I, they're a little pithy, um, soft, kind of foamy-like, and I, I don't, particularly care for that texture. So if they're big, I cut them off. But just cut your bell peppers. If you want them smaller pieces, cut them in smaller pieces. Totally up to you. I love fajitas, and I cook them often at home. My favorite uh, is steak fajitas. I do a flank steak. I've cooked that for you before. It's so good. Mm, so, so good. Then I want one onion, like a medium-sized onion. I like to cut the bottom and the top for this because I'm not dicing it. If I were dicing it, I'd want to leave that root end intact. But I'm not dicing it. I'm going to slice it. I like to take off that outer layer, and I'm just cutting it, as they say, pole to pole, top to bottom. So I'm getting smaller rings instead of the long half moon shape. If you want the flavor, but not necessarily the chunkiness, you can, you know, chop these up finer. I'm not a fan of raw onion, but I adore cooked onions. So the more onions, the better for me. I love them in fajitas. Sometimes I like to add a tomato too, uh, just like dice up that tomato and add it to the vegetable mixture. It's really good. All right, now, this is optional. I'm just going to do it because I really love the zest of the um, citrus. We are going to add some lime. So I'm just going to go ahead and zest my lime because there's so much flavor in the zest of a lime or lemon or orange, any citrus. There's a lot of flavor in that outer green part. Not the white part, just the, the green. I love lime, and lime on Mexican food or Tex-Mex, whatever, is delicious. It's delicious on everything, but especially, I think, on the Tex-Mex food. Now, I am going to add a little bit of salt and pepper to both my chicken and my vegetables. A little more pepper. get quite enough. I'm going to toss this together real quick just to kind of evenly disperse this and break up those onions just a touch. Then I'm going to grab my oil. I'm going to add some oil to this. And I'll, I'll I'll just use my regular hand. I'm going to toss all that chicken with the salt and pepper, and I'm going to put that straight in the bowl or in the on the pan. And I'm going to use, this is just pre-packaged up fajita seasoning. If you don't have any of this, you could use taco seasoning. You could make your own 
which I do, and I've showed you how to do that before with um, uh, chili powder, oregano, some thyme, a little bit of cumin, a little bit of um, oregano, how spicy you want it is up to you. I'm going to have to wash this bowl or bottle, y'all remind me. It's got to be washed because my raw chicken hands are touching it. It's glass, so we can clean it and sanitize it. You want to coat this with, you know, quite a bit of olive oil. And I'll, we'll, we'll add the juice of the lime at the end because we want it to be fresh. Toss everything. Now, you could have done it in the bowl if you wanted, but it's just easier to get it here. Toss all of it together and then spread it out. You want your oven preheated to 400 degrees. And we're going to let this roast. I've lined my baking pan with some aluminum foil for easy cleanup. I'm just going to pop this in the oven, wash my hands. When I come back, I will show you how to do the stuffed angel food cake. Pop it in a 400 degree oven. It takes about 30 minutes, maybe, maybe, depending on how thick your chicken is. Stir it about halfway through. So after about 15 minutes, just go in with your spatula and stir it up. And you've got some delicious fun eating here. I'll be back in just a few minutes. Everything is roasting in the oven and we are going to get started on dessert. For this, you will need, I just bought an angel food cake. Um, they're delicious, they're convenient. Just get a purchased angel food cake. I, I like the round ones for this. I know you can get angel food cake in the uh, loaf, but I prefer the round for this recipe. You can do it with the other, but I think it looks prettier with this. You will also need some Cool Whip, some cinnamon, some brown sugar, some pecans, and some cream cheese. And one more ingredient that I want to talk about. Now, if you have vanilla, or excuse me, cinnamon extract, which comes like vanilla extract or almond extract, you can use that. Sometimes that can be a little difficult to find. Um, I have some at home, but I wanted to show you, if you cannot find that, in the grocery store where they have the cake decorating stuff, where they have the, you know, the, the pans and the sprinkles and the um, piping tips and things like that, you will see a little thing, it usually comes two to a pack, called cinnamon oil. You can use this. Now, let me say, this stuff is potent. When I was in high school, Oh, a long minute ago, <laughs> um, and junior, even junior high, middle school, there was a big thing going on where people, we, we would take toothpicks and soak it in this oil and then just because it tastes delicious and, you know, just kind of chew them with our mouth. But then, you know, your side of your lip eventually gets burned. This stuff is potent. You literally only need maybe three or four drops of this. So be careful with it. That's plenty. It is extremely potent. It's cinnamon oil, not cinnamon extract. You can use either one. So you're going to mix that with, you know, a couple of cups of Cool Whip. Now what I like to do, if I can find a spoon in here, is taste it to see if it's cinnamony enough for me. Mmm, fine, delicious actually. Now the cinnamon oil has a heat to it. If you've ever had a 
Red Hot. You know those cinnamon little disc candies, the Red Hots? You know how hot they can get? That's the flavor of that. Oh, it's so good. I love it. All right, I have in this bowl some cream cheese, about a fourth of a cup. I wanna add just a couple of tablespoons or so of brown sugar. I'm actually going to add some cinnamon, just regular cinnamon powder to that. Mm, that's so good. And I have here just some, I'm using pecans, but you can use whatever kind of nut you want. Almonds or walnuts would be delicious. Any of them would work. I want them to be kind of crushed up, sort of fine. So what I do is I put them in a Ziploc bag and I'm using my meat mallet. If you don't have a meat mallet, use a rolling pin or a bottom of a skillet, whatever you want. Now I want to save a few of these to reserve for the top, but I'm gonna put, I don't know, maybe three fourths of a cup or so. You, you don't have to measure this exactly. It's fine. I'm gonna mix mine with a mixer, but if you wanna just use a spoon, you can. I just find the cream cheese gets incorporated a little bit better if you do it with a mixer. The cream cheese should by all means be at room temperature and mine is not quite where I would want it to be but I'm gonna break it up just a little bit. And then I'm, going, I'm actually going to put it in this bigger bowl. This bowl's too small. This is not the same side that cut the raw chicken, in case you're wondering. I'm gonna add a little bit of this. I have some more Cool Whip in there in the refrigerator, so it'll be fine. You want to put about a cup or so of your Cool Whip in this. If you cannot find or don't want to buy the cinnamon oil, you don't, you know, just leave it out or add some cinnamon to it. Of course, it'll change the color, but it's fine. Mix that up really good. Okay. Be careful if you do that on the side of your glass bowl. Alrighty. Now, we want to take our angel food cake, and I just put it on a platter here. Let me get this over here. You will need a serrated knife, and you want to cut about an inch evenly as possible across your cake. Take that off, set it aside, and reserve it. Then you want to go in your cake and you want to cut out, be careful, don't go all the way to the bottom. You want to leave a border and then take your fingers, get it out, crumble it and add it to your mixture here. I like to take my knife and sort of score the, um, see if you don't do that, what you do to a piece where I didn't have it scored you'll get the center and you don't want that. You want it, you want to leave that border. But what we're doing is we're creating a little tunnel in our angel food cake. You could also do this with pound cake, would be yummy. Pound cake is my favorite, I love pound cake. Mm, my favorite cake of all is pound cake. Love it, love it, love it. Don't go down to the very, very bottom just leave enough. And then I like to stir that in. Let me just use my spoon. Stir the cake pieces in there. Make them as fine or as big as you want. And then what you're gonna do is place that mixture in the little tunnel that you just made. Now you will have, probably will have some extra stuffing just serve that on the side when you slice it. Don't get rid of it for sure. Just serve it on the side or make two of them. Okay. Mm. This is an easy, quick little dessert. This would be a great thing to let your kids do. Kids love to help in the kitchen. Let them do it. They don't learn from you, how are they gonna learn how to cook? 
It's a basic survival skill. And then place your top back on as best as you can get it. And then we're going to frost it with the Cool Whip. If you need more, use more. Just frost it with your leftover Cool Whip. Just like you would a cake. Now, obviously, this will need to stay uh, chilled. Let me get some more out of here. Mm -hmm. You could also, if you don't want to use the cinnamon oil, you could use the uh, some vanilla extract. Would be yummy in this. Don't buy that oil just for this recipe. Unless you're going to do a lot of baking or candy making or something like that. Um, just, you know, use what you have in your kitchen. Okay. I think I am going to need a little bit more Cool Whip. I'm just going to keep frosting this and sprinkling. I'm going to sprinkle the leftover pecans on the top. When I come back, I'll show you how to serve this meal. I'll be back in just a minute. Alrighty, now to finish the cake, all I did was frost it with the remaining Cool Whip mixture and just sprinkled those leftover pecans on top. I'm telling you, that is so good. I've been nibbling on the extra filling on the inside. The, about 30 minutes into the bean bake, I stirred in about a fourth of a cup or so of sour cream and topped it with just breadcrumbs. Popped it back in the oven. This is bubbling hot. I'm going to let that set for a few minutes. And here are our delicious fajitas. If you don't know this, to warm your tortillas, I'm using flour tortilla shells. Um, if you want to warm those, what you can do is wrap them in a damp paper towel, pop them in the oven for, I mean the microwave for about 30 seconds, and you have a delicious warm tortilla. You can serve this with whatever kind of toppings you like, sour cream, lettuce, whatever you want, guacamole. Um, by all means, do drizzle a little bit of lime juice on there because I'm telling you that makes it delicious. There you go, an easy, quick meal for any day of the week. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you next time on Everyday Manna.